Coaches, welcome to the Locker Room Podcast. Danny St. Leisure, Ryan Jones joining us again this evening, lads. Very welcome. Uh, busy weekend of football. Um, just looking here, lads, at the, the result, probably the standard result of the weekend was was Dublin 5 18 to, to not 12 and, and Crow Park against their own very, very slick performance. Uh, Daniel, we've talked about them on the show quite a bit. Uh, um, we've talked about their 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 ability, their basic skills, just the, the, the level of conditioning, the coaching, everything. But even like Colin Pascal coming into the team late, you know, late change and end up at two, three, two, four on, on, on Sunday, like it's 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 an endless list list of riches, isn't it, really, with them? Yeah, yeah. They're looking they're looking really championship ready. Like we said last week, you can see teams kind of ramping up a small bit. And the, the biggest thing for all that, and I like Pascal is a really good point. You can see him ripping to get back in the team, like probably very aware that he's under pressure for a spot. Like last year's All-Star has to play well. You see Mannion come in slotting over a couple of points as well, you know. But the the biggest thing for me just from from the coaching side of it is like I think we could very clearly see why teams can't come out of defensive structure. I mean, you look at uh, Tyrone went gung ho and they just got ripped apart. Like and and you know you kind of, you kind of I know a lot of people might complain about well why te- why do teams have spent almost so much time defensively? Well, you can see why because at the top end the Dublin's the Derrys of this world will rip you asunder. And like yeah. I, I think that's the biggest thing from this league for me is at the really top end you're seeing. The coaching of forward play, I think, has gone to a different level, and and I think Derry and Dublin are forefront of it, and I think probably down are let's say at, at the beginning of that phase, but you can see something similar, and and for me, this whole league from a coaching side of thing things, it's just shown that forward play has now been looked at probably as defensive play was looked at in 2011 and 12, you know that sort of way where teams are very clearly spending time in it, but um yeah, Dublin Dublin were just awesome. Now Toronto were poor, but but Dublin were awesome, you know. And also as well, you know, I think like obviously I've talked about it. I feel like a broken record at this stage talking about the the, the double the double kick pass, like, but so evident sitting behind the goals yesterday, uh, on the canal end and watching down the field, you know, creating that spine, creating that bunch, very very hard to defend again. But it's also very hard to defend Daniel when you have a foot race and a ball's kicked into space, and you have Conor Callahan in a foot race with you, or you have Kieran Kilkenny. Just the physical, the physicality, the strength, the power. Like, I know it's early days, like, but they're a mile ahead of anybody that I've seen this year. A mile ahead, like. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, and like, it's actually it's it's a significant turnaround because I like I up to maybe semi final stage last year, I didn't think they were. I I thought they were way off. To be honest with you, but like I don't know if there's something so has something changed coaching wise. Um, I I'm not so sure, but they look like they're a different team. And and you know, like obviously Croke Park suits them down to the ground, like, but but that's because they're physically stronger, quicker than the majority of teams they're going to be playing against. And it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a scary prospect, like, because, do you know what, they look like they have a real hunger and, and that's always, that's always a really good sign. There stages last year where that didn't look to be the case, but like, as you said, as you mentioned, Basquiat earlier on, like he was ripping into that game and, and that, that hunger is, is a dangerous thing for other teams, but it's an awful pity now it's going to be another, what, maybe, Month, month and a half, two months before we see them even getting into that stride again. Obviously, league final, yes, but after that, it's going to be it's going to be a grim couple of Leinster championship games for for some Leinster counties, you know. Yeah, it really is, Ryan. Like like just watching them there, Ryan and Sunday, uh, you know, I said to Daniel, like, like there's so many superlatives you can use to describe them, like, but you know, for me, they're they're so far ahead. But surely, Ryan, maybe last year getting relegated to Division Two, having Division Two as an opportunity, maybe to blood. You know, maybe more fringe based players, more squad players. You know, the likes of Daniel, for example, Lee Gann and Ross McGarry probably won their first All Ireland. They actually playing on a regular basis, and you're probably thinking that's actually probably give them another step now, Ryan, another bit of confidence. Added in the the extra hunger and space that the likes of Kilkenny has, Con seems just Con just seems to have come back with a real bit between his teeth, and really just thought he was unplayable at times on Sunday as well. Albeit now Tyrone were poor, and and this this struck me as a team that sort of just wanted to get that game out of the way, you know, we're safe. Our, our cup final was last week against Monaghan, but but the Dublin Ryan, you know, they, 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 they really are on a different trajectory than everyone else. Yeah, well, obviously you were down at it, Stephen. For me, the conditional level of Dublin is unbelievable. Like yeah. Dan, I know Dan's involved yeah. there in Dublin club football, but there's guys coming into the Dublin squad that maybe you would think it would take them a year to actually get up to that level because, they're you know, they're playing Division One football and they just seem to be able to you know, get get into the rhythm so easy. So 
the conditioning level in Dublin club football must be very good. Like the strength of conditioning, the way players look after themselves, they don't necessarily have to be involved in a county team for two to three years. Do the way you would see some players maybe it would take them that two to three year period of doing the right things before then they'd start developing into a proper inter-county footballer. The, the Dublin guys are, Jesus, they, the way they must look after themselves, even as a club player, must yeah. be miles ahead of any other county in Ireland, in my opinion. And then obviously you add in the, the skill set that they all have as well. And of course, the likes of Fenton, Kilkenny, Con, these boys, regardless of who they're playing, they're pure winners. They do not want to lose any game at all. And like you did make the point that okay, Throne maybe want to just get up, fulfill the fixture. But there's a lot of new players playing for Throne there that I'm sure want to put their hand up to try and, you know, stake a place for the championship. Um so Throne are a proud county as well. So I wouldn't read into that that they were just fulfilling the fixture. I think Dublin are just so far ahead. And mm. it's not necessarily their first team, it's their their next 15 as well. Yeah, yeah. I thought I guess very impressed. But even the flexibility in their play at times, Fenton would drift inside Daniel on Sunday, you know, and, and maybe play in there and hover around there for a bit. And just the flexibility and the and the ability of them just to be comfortable everywhere in the field. And listen, let's let's be under no illusions either, lads. There's times and they could see it very clearly, particularly Daniel early in the game, like Dublin at 15 men behind the ball straight away, you know. You know, they, they were well organized. Obviously, it's not just 15 back zone, it's 15 back, and they are man to man, you know, and there is aggression and there is heat on the ball, but they still have those bodies back. You know, they still have those bodies back, and, and they still have that default defensive structure, Daniel, that, that is that is ultimately really difficult to play against as well. Like, yeah, yeah, and, and they're very the word I'd use for them defensively when they get into that set, and they do get into that set, definitely. And and I think that's not a negative for me. There's, there's occasions when it's necessary, but they're proactive defensively they're not reactive so they're constantly yeah. looking for a turnover rather than waiting to see how they can defend that me traps sending people down channels looking for double ups coming in behind and, and actually i noticed as well too when they turn the ball over like ryan you talked about the conditioning levels it takes that level of conditioning you know it, it's e it's easy on the eye because they break with so much pace and, and penetration and and you know and numbers as well and it, and it just looks better on the eye than a team ryan you talked last week in the show about a team that comes out in a more sort of stagnant manner slow based possession dublin's quick 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 you know yeah well they have that speed and power Stephen. so um again as you said their transition we might say that they, they want to play quick football, but they, they have the players to do that. And also, as you said, they have the ball winners inside so that if there is a kick pass on 35 yards, then boys are nearly always out in front, which then allows the runners to come hard off that, you know. It's only like the boys that are playing deep feel that the likes of Con and these guys will definitely win the ball. So they're they're not afraid to make that hard yeah. run because there's a good chance then they'll, they'll come off come off the, the last pass and get, and get an easy score for themselves. But yeah. uh, they're, they're relentless, really. And... I suppose even you just you just think Desi Farther, he's just standing back and he's he, the competition that he has probably makes his job very easy as well. Yeah, I was going to say that, Daniel. I remember, John, Daniel, I think it was around about 2016, I was doing a, a coaching camp, Easter coaching camp in Scaries, and Lindsay Davey and Johnny uh, Cooper were, were, were also there. And I, I was chatting to Cooper and, you know, he sort of said something like, you know, people think we're training in the best facilities, the best pitches, the best. And he says, we're actually not. He says, what, what actually drives us, Ryan, is interesting you said, he says, if I'm not performing, he says, I know that number 17 to number 30 is chumping to get into my jersey, you know, and, and I think that, Daniel, has a massive impact on a group as well when you have that competition, doesn't it, surely? Like, oh, 100%. And, and like Ryan spoke earlier about the, the, the players coming in ready formed. Like, I mean, you've got 16 Division One. Uh, clubs in Dublin, like so. Even let's say if you're not involved in this in this inter county squad, if from under 14s up, if you're a late developer, every I can guarantee every Division One club in Dublin starts the S and C at the same time county teams do because their first game, first league game aligns itself with the first league game of the county, and you have 15 mm -hmm. league games to be ready for. So you have 16 squads of 30 all mm -hmm. that have a base level of S and C, like so. Like we, they have in house games. A couple of our lads are going into in house games every second or third day. So they're they're probably seeing, they're probably seeing a, a massive breadth of players. And if there's they're, they're they're all conditioned, they're all strong, they're all quick. And then if they can align that with a little bit of football, you know, like you were saying, I mean, the the, the depth is just the depth is insane. Like you know, and and they're just it reminds me of the the Leinster rugby kind of system with the with the school system in Leinster that they're they're fully formed players are coming into the Leinster academies and stuff like that because. Of the Black Rock and the St Michael's and all these lads have academies in their club in their in their schools. You know, it's the exact same way. Like it's mm. it's scary. It's like you know, they said it was a golden a golden era, and I thought maybe at stages last year and the year before, yeah, that that once Clokes and James McCarthy these lads started to wean off, that was it for a while. But um, no, it's, it's a 
yeah. then the prospect right. for us. Brian, I certainly feel, Ryan, that, that, that the kick pass, I've talked about it before, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you know their ability to kick the ball efficiently and effectively in Crow Park, you have to be able to do that to win an All-Ireland. Like, you know, there's no there's no, there's no, no point in, in, in beating, a, beating a, about the bush. You have to be able to kick the ball effectively, and they have that in, in abundance. Like. Yeah, they've, they've lovely kick passers, Stephen, and it always feels like it's not a forced kick pass. Correct. It's, it's, a, 35, yeah. it's a 35 kick pass, nearly one bounce into a forward, you know, just into his space more so. Um, and yeah, it always looks easy. And then the forward's receiving it probably, you know, where he can get his hands out quick to to yeah. release, to release then to a runner. And you're hundred percent right. Once you get to Crow Park, I feel you need the kicking game. Um, probably since Donegal won that at Ireland, even in 2012, you know, every team now since that has had a kicking game. And even then, don't remember, you know, if you remember, Donegal had a kicking game as well. They really yeah, they did. They put it in long to Murphy early yeah. on, put it into McFadden, got them the goals against Mayo. So I suppose it'll be interesting to see coming into the league finals this Saturday. Like Down are a phenomenal running team. Like the pace and the power that they have um is counter-attacking. And I watched bits of their games against Clare at the weekend. I felt last year once they played against Meath in Crow Park, they struggled because Meath were able to nearly match the running power. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see if they're able to develop that further once they get up to Crow Park on Saturday night, you know, to see is the kicking game an option for them as well. Yeah, and we'll, we'll chat about down later in the show, but I suppose that, that they are the champions, Daniel, and I suppose Saturday night is the contenders, you know, like like Derry are obviously the one team that I feel at the present moment in time probably can, and look, Kerry as well, obviously, you know, on, on any given day, but I do feel Derry now have, have joined the top table edge, and, and I think Ryan talked about the physical conditioning. This is something that I think Derry made big gains in during lockdown. You know, at the time, it was probably well publicised. Obviously, you know, they weren't meant to be doing it, but it was obviously well documented that Derry were training very hard three, four days a week with Gallagher. And that obviously got them a large, a large step ahead, Daniel, of a lot of counties in Ulster from a conditioning perspective. You know, when I know Kieran Mina from chatting to Kieran, you know, they did place an enormous amount of emphasis on hard, hard running the training. Like, and you can see that in that Derry team, but also Daniel as well. They're brilliant footballers, brilliant footballers. Yeah, it, it's it's definitely like it's definitely a combination of as you said that 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 condition and that there's no doubt again, but absolutely flying. But uh, Ryan, you spoke about like stupid running before from turnovers at a couple of podcasts ago, and I I think this current dairy team, everything they're doing is efficient, and yeah. that the 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 efficiency of how they defend, the efficiency of how they attack, there is no stupid running for the sake of it. Like you know, so that they're able to conserve energy for for power plays almost for 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 want of a better word. Like we we're talking about teams, kind of even Dublin being on that 15, 14 inside of forty five. You can imagine a training drill in Dublin where Dublin have to defend with fourteen on fifteen for maybe maybe a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and on the whistle. Everyone has to be up inside the far side of the field before score score can happen or something like that. I'm trying to recreate a drill in my head, but if you get into that mindset, that mindset of efficiency when you're when you're actually on the ball, rather like I was looking at Kildare on Saturday and I was just thinking they do so much chasing their tail and so much inefficient defending. Yeah, they have no energy then to go forward. Whereas you're looking at the Dublin's, the Derrys, they are so efficient with what they do. They are preserving preserving energy for that moment where they smell turnover and then it's like. They hear the whistle going and it's take off and and down in fairness down do, did something similar to, to Claire at the weekend as well but it's um I I think probably as I said to you at the top of, of top of the show like that I I think Dublin and Derry have taken a step ahead of the rest because of how they have developed their attack and play and I know some people might say like you don't want to uh, over coach attack and play but we can see the two teams that are very clearly practicing patterns of forward player are Dublin and Derry for me. I think Kerry still rely on individually really good forwards and they do and that'll get them a long way but I think it's so clear to see Dublin and Derry that what they know what they're doing and they know how they want to do it and I, I think that efficiency makes it very clear for players in their heads, you know. And Ryan, just looking here again, like 219 at the weekend from Derry, 12 goals scored this year, 138 points scored, 38 point plus score difference, you know, six wins from seven in the National League. The only game the loss was Dublin and they rested Connor Glass, Ethan Doherty that night as well. You could possibly say, you know, this Saturday will be interesting. Like, and I do feel that people are sort of, you know, playing down the league fans a little bit. Like Mickey Hart will certainly not play this down, Ryan, on Saturday night. Or sorry, I, Sunday. Sunday, yeah. 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 Um, I don't think so. And I think Dublin will also not want Derry coming up and beating getting, them. getting a victory over them. Um, yeah. As I said to you earlier there, them Dublin boys, Kilkenny and Fenton and these guys, they're born winners. Um, they'll want to put their stamp on it and say, hold on, boys, you're not, you're not at our level just yet. So I think out of all the league finals, you know, I know it's the Division 1, but I think it's 
you know, we're looking at Division 2, saying, will Donegal and Armagh go full tilt? I'm convinced that the Division 1 final will be held for either. Um, 219, as you mentioned, it's their ability, Stephen, to get scores all over the pitch. I think the 10 different scores again at the weekend. And we yeah. talked about Derry's conditioning. Um, you mentioned about, or we talked about Dublin's super conditioning, but Derry are at that level as well. And in fairness, they've kept the squad together. The secret is that you don't have boys dropping in and out. Derry have had the same squad now for the last number of years, three to four years. They've been doing all the right things. They've added in a couple of the under 20s, the minors that maybe have competed in all Ireland's. Lachlan Murray now all of a sudden is properly, you know, start starting to find his his form. So Derry have the have the squad. And I suppose the first massive test is this this weekend in the league final. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And listen, you know, to be honest with you, um, Ledge, I, I've been really, really impressed with them. And I thought like you see Derry as well, like obviously we, we see it was very documented, Ryan, what what Mina and and Rory Gallagher brought to the table. But I was sort of curious, Daniel, to see if what Mickey would bring differently, but there hasn't really been an awful lot of difference to what they're doing. You know, as you say, maybe just a bit more efficiency, you know, real, real high level of efficiency. And probably, Daniel, to be fair to Mickey, he probably has blooded three or four other players as well, you know, that that, that Ryan has mentioned there, that maybe that maybe Rory hadn't and, and Kieran, you know. Yeah, and, and I think sometimes, like, sometimes the, the role of manager, like, like obviously Galler, I mean, a lot of the, the groundwork done, but sometimes the manager, when you have a good setup and good players, you just don't piss them off. <laughs> it's it's yeah. an awful lot of it. Like, and yeah. sometimes try if you come in and and maybe ego gets in the way as a manager, and you're saying, "Well, this is my way of doing things. I'm going to change things because I'm not Rory Gallagher." That can that can sometimes be like players are like, "Well, it's not about being anyone. It's about what works for us." And very clearly, there you're on the path of what was working. I, I I think the blooding players is definitely that's the, that's the biggest difference I can see. Um, I, I noticed, I think it was a Conor McCluskey made a comment at the weekend about Horst Devlin saying to him, you know, he needs to get his scoring red up like for a cornerback, you know, so, so maybe even that's it level. Yeah. It, it, it could just be mindset. Like there mightn't even be anything technically yeah. different on the field. As we probably all know, listen lads, we all do, I'd say we've all done the same drills in the same ways, the same, like a lot of the time. So maybe it's just a mindset, how players are spoken to, how they address certain things. And like Derry probably, I'd say have been, Maybe not as watertight defensively as they have been possibly, but I think their attacking play looks really fluid at the moment. But but that could have been an evolution that was coming anyway with with players three and four years down the road. So it's very hard to know. But I I think that, that sometimes leaving well enough and on is a, is a is a good approach from management when they know what they have under advantage. You know, it was nearly like it was nearly like Mickey Hart just uses use his experience to say. I don't need to change much, but there was probably a blank slate for a few players. Like Lachlan Murray didn't really get a chance under Rory Geller. For whatever reason, Rory obviously didn't fancy him. Kieran McFall obviously walked away. So yeah. I suppose them players were probably coming in with, you know, a bit of energy. They knew that this new management all of a sudden is going to, it's, it's a clean slate. And it was kind of, these boys now, like McFall is playing brilliant football. Um, yeah, yeah. Lachlan Murray, as I mentioned, scored one four one five the weekend. It's like all of a sudden now they feel this is my opportunity mm-hmm. that um if Mickey if I'm impressing and training Mickey will give me give me my chance that probably they weren't getting under Rory. Yeah, and I think by all accounts Devlin the, the reports are about horse you know the, the energy levels he brings to training and the intensity. Chatting a couple of Louth lads were very very impressed with them last year. You know, just speaking of of, of Louth, obviously a big win at the weekend for them against Kildare. I know Daniel were like a broken record here. I, I know you picked up on something defensively like and it, it is okay Daniel we we can sort of. We can poke fun at Kildare a little bit, you know, and they, they have become a figure of fun, probably, you know, which is unfair, probably, on the likes of, of Glenn Ryan and stuff and these guys that, that I think Colin Moore touched on it, you know, that they were real, real good servants to Kildare football, like, you know, and, and maybe just feel a wee taz let down, but there has to be Daniel accountability as well. Like some of the some of the defensive display on, on some of the defensive football on, on uh, Saturday night was 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 just null and void. You picked up on one or two things, didn't you, from a defensive yeah. point of view? I look, I, I watched the game and I was curious to see the game because... Yeah, I watched it myself, yeah. It's, you know, like, I, I thought maybe it would have been very easy for like Kildare lads knowing they were down to kind of throw in the towel. But, but what what was actually more demoralising for me from a Kildare point of view was that they actually tried really hard. Like, they made a very genuine effort to work mm-hmm. hard and, and try to do the right things. But there was two clips that, that came up and actually the GA retweeted the two of them. And um, they're on the Twitter page. You can see it. Like, but there was the first score that Jackson got. I think from from play, yeah. and yeah. it was just so interesting. To, to, when you, I just paused the clip and had a look at the uh, Kildare's defensive shape, and you had a cornerback marking 
on one sideline, facing his man, facing away from the ball, corner, loud corner forward, standing on the corner flag, doing nothing. You had the other corner back marking the other corner flag, standing in his face, doing nothing. You had a midfielder in front of the play with the ball behind him, standing pushing another loud midfielder in the chest. You had Owen Doyle as a plus one in, in kind of in a good enough spot, but he had to come forward and engage a loud runner because there was no everyone was man to man, as we call it. And then there was like this horseshoe space in front of the Kildare full back line that all it took was a little backdoor cut, a 30 yard pop pass into space, mm-hmm. one offload and a point. And and it just it just kind of it was like a microcosm of Kildare for me in general that there was loads of effort. Everyone was trying to do the right thing. They were getting up on a man, they're getting hands up, but there was no actual thought behind, well, what are we trying to do? Which is to prevent scores. Like like louder playing against the wind. I mean mm-hmm. That's right, it, yeah. It just seemed really like there was a lack of understanding about what they were trying to do. And even when they were when they were playing against the win in the second half on their kickouts, like it looked like they'd never played against the win for a kickout before. It was literally lump ball as far and as high as you can down the middle of the field and just hope our big tall players catch a ball. Like that that's not like that's not intercounty coaching. Like, do you know what I mean? There were, there was nothing. They didn't try to do anything. Like Loud had a really high press. They never looked to overload a side. They never even looked for a bunch of break to one side. They never really looked like they were getting into pockets. And last week we talked about the, the, the development of the play. Like how often did they get a short kick out of the way just about, get it back to the keeper, and then they got turned over because there was nowhere to go. There was no thought about what is the next phase after this. And yeah. And 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 that's that must be demoralizing because I could genuinely you can genuinely see a good effort for them. And the fact there were only three points in it in the end is down to the fact that they've got really big, strong athletes who are definitely they're definitely talented footballers there, but there's such a disconnect between what they're trying to do. Like it, it must be it must be horrendous. It's, it's the GA's biggest mystery, Ryan, I suppose, Kildare football at the minute. Like yeah. it's, certainly, Ryan, you know, there has to be an element of kind of belief on the coaching field. Like you look at even the way they, they played with the Gale Force win in the first half in, in Netwatch. They didn't press any kickouts. You know, they didn't press until a couple of minutes for it. Like that, that's nearly unforgivable, isn't it? Like yeah, well, I, I was at the Fermanagh Cavan game, so I didn't see it. But what Dan's saying there about cornerback Stanton looking to the face of a corner forward when the mm-hmm. ball's gone like that to me why is that the management has to take you know accountability for that like we all know when the ball's on one side of the pitch you tuck across it's called a smart man-to-man I understand Kildare maybe the tactics where we're going to go out and front up here and go man-to-man with Louth but you know you have to be smart about it as well and they dropped off kick outs when they when they had the breeze you said yeah. Like, like you're never going to win a game playing that way. So I'm just wondering, does does the players not ask them ask the Kildare management? Hold on, we second mm-hmm. here. I don't agree with this because there's a lot of Kildare players there are very experienced and you know they've been at um, top level even with their club. I'm thinking of Owen yeah. Doyle and Nice. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's it's very strange. It's but, very. But, strange. Uh, Ryan, would you not say like just to get both your views on this? Right, dropping off kickouts fine. I don't mind dropping off the kickout. If you're going to drop off a kickout, like at least have some form of defensive organisation then behind that. If you're dropping off, that's you're dropping off a kickout. A number of things, obviously, right? Get or get a foothold in the game. You know, you're maybe setting a trap for a corner back. You know, you're maybe just sort of feeding at the opposition. You don't want to go aggressive too early and maybe get caught with a kicker over the top or something like that, you know. But if you're dropping off a kicker, like, there has to be then, Daniel, a plan, you know, to, to back that up then. You're either going with an organised defensive system, you're flooding the middle third, you're going to send the team down a certain channel. You know, there didn't seem to be any of that. No, no. And I think I think that's the ultimate That's the ultimate thing with Kildare. They're, 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 they're doing stuff but they're not actually. There's no. There doesn't seem to be an actual purpose to what they're doing. Like you know, as, as you say, if you're like, even even just from a logistical point, if you're looking at the Kildare team, and like in 2018, we mentioned this. We, we mentioned that like, if we pushed up on Kildare, they went long. They have four to five, six right. foot four, six foot five right. monsters around the middle of the field that we couldn't afford to. Like, could you imagine like like Loud's press in the second half? I thought was brilliant. Now Loud was yeah. like to see a smaller team, but they went with four or three banks of four, and they were aggressive. They were active in between the lines. A very clearly coached team like yeah. whereas you couldn't say that about Kildare We've, and Kildare probably had better assets to press the kick out so th- that all just that all just points in one direction for me and like I again I'm only assuming like I don't know unless players are taking it on themselves on the field to do whatever they want I don't know but something looks really disconnected between what, what's happening on the field or what's happening in the coaching field or what's meant to happen I don't know but it's it's you know, it, it must be really demoralizing. So I think there's a massive gain. If you get that Kildare team all pointing in one direction, all the one direction, knowing what they're doing offensively, knowing what they're doing defensively, like they're they're a serious outfit. Like they have really yeah. good footballers. And you, yeah. you mentioned Ace. 
Like, Nace don't set up stupidly. Nace are a really well organized team. So, yeah. like, where's the. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I can understand is like, we're seven, there's seven league games in, and some of the stuff that you are telling me went on at the weekend. Like you, if a if a minor team was doing it, you'd be saying, "Have these boys never been coached before? Have they not seen this at underage? They've competed in on in all Ireland under twenties. Nice is a very they're a top team. Let's face it, they're they're within a shout of winning Leinster titles. So for Kildare to be at this crack seven league games in, Jesus boys, yeah. I don't know what's going on. But Ryan, seven seven defeats in a row. It's the second time they've done this in a number of years now. They lost seven in a row in Division One as well. They've lost seven in a row in Division Two. They're in Division Three. And like you know, really and truly, there is no guarantees that you get out of three. You know, there's no there's no guarantees now. Albeit, I think three is is a very very poor level this year. Um, I think down with a standout team by a good bit. I think even Westmeath proved at the weekend. You know, obviously without Heslin, they're 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 quite ordinary. Like, but but the Division Two final on Sunday, uh, leading into the the Dublin Derry game, obviously Armagh Donegal, two two teams probably that are very well coached. Um, and will continue to make make progress as as, as the summer goes on. But certainly Sunday. Is this a sort of a signature game, Daniel, for for McGuinness? Do you think he he'll want to put a, a marker down and say, look, you know, silverware psychological blow over McGinney? What do you think? Yeah, I'm 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 actually not so sure to be honest with you. Like, I know uh, McHugh and uh, McBurdy. McBurdy's going to struggle. Yeah, he's going to be a big loss. Big loss. I, I I'm not sure about that. Like, you know, I I, I don't know. I I'd be I, I agree that Dublin Derry I think will be full throttle. Dublin need a really good test because, as I said, there's nothing coming in Leinster, and I think. Mickey Hart's nature is to want to win any game, and I don't think it's any coincidence he left a lot of his lads on the sideline for the group game with with Dublin. You know, so I, I I think that that will be a really good contest. I'm not so sure about Armagh Donegal. I don't know. And interestingly, I actually think it's bigger for McGinney than McGinnis to, to to get a to get a notch in the belt here. To be honest, and I'm I'm not sure how much benefit will be to either of them because with with the the attrition rate in Ulster, like it's hard to know. But I I could see a little bit of a a little bit of shadow box in this one. Um, yeah, for Ryan, that, not but. What what's your thoughts, Ryan? Um, well, I know Donegal have picked up a few injuries. And yeah, McGuinness is you know he's mentioned that a few times. I'm not too sure what approach they'll take. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of just mix mix their team up. As for Armagh, I suppose they had the non-event really against Cork. They're out in two weeks' time against Fermanagh. I think McGuinness will probably want to get a settled team as well. You know, he's, he's changed his team yeah. around a lot throughout the league, and it's a bit of silverware for them. Armagh boys, I think it's you huge. Know, yeah, I think it's huge. Yeah. As much as they have developed this last number of years, they haven't actually picked up any silverware, um, albeit yeah. the Division 2 title. So well, I think McGinney, a game out in Crow Park, go on with it. That'll be his approach. Yeah. And I'm not too sure what way Donegal will be. So for Armagh for me on that one. Yeah, well, you've a league title, you've a league title, lads, a provincial title in All Ireland, you know, and, and realistically, in All Ireland is probably, you know, beyond maybe both those teams at the minute, you know, um, possibly a final, possibly. You know, depending on the draw stuff, but I do feel Dublin Dublin are, are, are still a good bit ahead of both those teams. I think Derry are as well. Like, but it'll be an interesting game. It'll be an interesting game. Um, you know, Armagh will be disappointed conceding two sixteen. They went they went quite strong on Saturday night as well okay. against Cork. Uh, but but Cork finished the National League quite well. And again, you know, an, another team who probably are a little bit of a mystery. You know, when it when it comes to 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 looking at the size of the county and the athleticism and the and the and the pace and the power they have. But moving in Division Three, lads, they're uh, down. Obviously, had a huge win at the weekend. Uh, Ryan, you you've been you've been very impressive down this year, haven't you, with the pace and and the power, and obviously, you know, decent enough foundations laid last year. Lavery gave the whole thing a bounce, but I think the addition of Kieran Mina this year has been well documented. The, the progression and 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 the coaching as well. Yeah, I watched some of their game against Clare there, and as you mentioned, their their pace is unbelievable. Like their yeah. pace is, in my opinion, I know it is a Division Three game. But it's up, it's up there at the top teams. Um, mm -hmm. Mina, no doubt, would have brought an extra dimension to them. And they're very good at running ahead of the ball, creating goal opportunities. And probably that was something that Derry were very good at once Mina was there as well. So they scored three goals the weekend. They squeezed heavily on the Clare kick out and they got they got joy from that. Um, but the only thing, they've seen to play Havern up front by himself. And... I'm just not too sure. Once they get the Crow Park, if Down have the kicking game as well to, to mix with it with their running power, and um, mm -hmm. that'll be my only thing. Uh, they're going to probably play Armagh. Let's face it, in an Ulster semi final. So last year, Armagh were still far far too good for them. So it'll be interesting to see. They want to get a get a win this this Saturday night. You know, they come up against Westmeath, get a title under their belts, build the confidence going into the championship. And it'll be interesting to see. Now there is definitely a bounce. It was a massive crowd at that game on on Sunday as well. Um, so down, down's in a very good place, and like bringing Mina in has definitely brought them up a few notches. 
Mm, yeah, the, the the pace Daniel is 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 certainly something that you would nearly feel would be suited to Crow Park. And I know last year, probably the worst thing that happened to them was scoring eight goals in the semi final against Leash that time in the in the in the Talchin because I think it actually nearly forced Colin O'Rourke's hand to actually play, you know, quite deep in the final. And and I think Down's biggest issue then, Ledge, was actually winning primary ball from kickouts as well. When a team pressed them to go long, you know, they just didn't really have that physicality around the middle of Johnny Flynn and Owen Murdoch, obviously this year, who are who are competing well and have seemed to have struck up a a, dis, a decent midfield partnership. Uh Dan Guinness sort of played a, a floating role yesterday and, and and was quite was quite good and effective as that as well. He's got himself a good shape. I think Dan's biggest issue has been his fitness over the last number of years. Now that he's got himself fit, he's he's a serious asset for them. But do you see Daniel Crow Park uh, obviously suiting this down team? Yeah, like logically it should, you know, but but as you said, like Mead really took them not took them apart, but like they gave them serious problems by not giving them spaces to run to run ahead of, you know. And yeah. and in fairness, the weekend, like what was it, one eight to one five, ten minutes into the second half, like it wasn't exactly it wasn't free flowing. And in fairness to down though, they did pick her moments. Like we talked about when is their time to really go after Claire to be on kickouts. And I think for the penalty they won in kickouts before that, and then the next kickout they won. And and the game was over then. It was two two eight two nine to one five. It was job done at that stage. But it did take 40, 45 minutes of patience to break that Clare team down. And look, I I'd say I'd say down want to banish some of the memories last year. And and the kind of I think they need I think they need a performance there as well. I I kind of agree with Ryan that I still think you need some secondary outlet in Crow Park. You can't just have a full forward on his own on the 21 and everyone else inside the 45. It just ultimately doesn't work. It's probably good enough for them to beat a lot of teams, but when you get to the tight end of the year, like you're talking about trying to, like, and again, they'll be fine in Ulster because a lot of pitches in Ulster are really tight. They're actually conducive to playing, a lot of pitches in the country are conducive to playing a, a kind of a turnover counter attack game. But when you get to Crow Park, it is different. Even if it's just a meter wider, the whole way around, like it makes a huge difference, and um, I I think it'll be important for Down to kind of banish last year's memories a little bit. So I'd say I'd say they'll be going fairly all out for all out for performance this weekend, and I think patience is the key for them. And Ryan, interesting, I'd love to hear your view. That's like like how important. Obviously, it might sound like a silly question, like but if Down if Down were to stay, for example, in the Talchin Cup, the, the the likelihood is they would probably win it this year. Right, they would probably win it, like but. Going into the Sam Maguire, that's massive for progression as well to come up against, you know, three really, really good teams in the in the group stages. Surely that would be a massive, massive uh, progression for the group as well. Yeah, I would say Down Laverty would want to be in this in the Sam Maguire. He would still prefer that if someone offered him the option of winning the Talchin Cup. I think they'll want to win, obviously, the Division Three League final to mm -hmm. get a bit of silverware, but uh, down down players would see themselves as you know in the Sam Maguire that would be the level that they would feel that they're at um, the one thing I would say Stephen as well I went to the down game last year against Armagh in Clonus now it was, a, it was a horrible day Yeah. but down with all their pace and all their power and their angles of running and counter attacking they just couldn't to be honest get the ball over the bar outside 20, 30, 30 yards um, you know there's a lot of players that are transition players that play in the forward line you think of Ryan Johnson you think of uh, Guinness Gilda, we talked about Gilm Doherty Gilm Doherty all these boys here are phenomenal runners very but similar players aren't they very similar but if you compare that to let's say Derry they've got forwards who can bang the ball over the bar 35 yards engineer their own scores so that was a big letdown for them last year in the Ulster and um, once they came up against Armagh they just they, they, were, they were very reliant on Pat Havern and he actually had a, had an off day so um I think they'll they'll be fine in Division 3 and if they're in the Talchin Cup they will rip teams apart of course but if they want to get to the next level of really competing you know in Division 2 against all Ireland contenders and stuff I think they're still they're still lacking a wee bit in the front line. Mm. Nearly like a, I know every every team would love a shame of going ledge like, but they, they probably do lack that real out and out marquee forward down, don't they? Like you know. I, yeah, I, I I think they actually I think they 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 lack a small bit of personality, not personality, but a bit of presence. Do you know what I mean? I, I, as you said, I think they're all very similar sort of players. Where is the where is the Connor Glass, the, the big personality that when when the shit hits the fan, the leader on field. Yeah. Like, again, this is just an outside observation. Like that that could be I could be way off. There could be lots of really good leaders within that. But just from my point of view, I, I just think they don't have that big personality that when the shit hits the fan, who's going to really take the thing by the scruff of the neck? Like I'm I'm not sure they have that yet. Um I would also say they probably are missing a little bit of man size, we'll call it that way. There's definitely yeah. a lot of gym strong players and all the rest of it there, but as you like, as you mentioned about Armagh last year, when the shit in the rain in that championship game, like 
do they have the size to break down these big teams? I yeah. must have that yet. But what I will say about Down is I think they're on the path to that. I said at the start of the show, I think Down are probably where Derry were just post-COVID, where they're on the start or their, their transition start of the, of the process. I think three or four years, we'll see Down really getting on to another level. Not quite there yet, though, I don't think. And the kick-out thing comes back to physicality. I think that will be an issue. But you look at the likes of Mordock when he gets a couple more years under his belt. Yeah. Like he's, going be, he's, going to be, he's going to be that leader, I think, if he goes on the same trajectory. But still a kid, like, you know. Looking forward, actually looking forward to seeing, you know, the, the Armagh game that they will beat Antrim. Uh, I've no doubt about it. And obviously not being dismissive from Anna, but you would you would say that it's going to be down Armagh semi-final. And then obviously if they're in the Sam, it'll be very interesting to see, you know, how they do against those those higher ranked teams. In Division 4, Ryan, you're sporting your Leitrim top of the nine, I think. Is that a Leitrim? Yeah, player? that's it there, Moisham. <laughs> that's the... Uh, you, you, you just needed to be careful there tonight. The bandwagon didn't knock you down as you were coming. <laughs> to the you know? uh, but no, listen, fair play. Listen, I'm sure there was great buzz about the place, Ryan, and stuff last night, I'm sure. Big, it was, I think it was a big one for Andy because I think it's year three, Ryan. Is it year three? Yeah, year three. Year three. Yeah. So you know, no promotion. Probably, you know, it was it was huge that he that he got out of four, and and four became very very tight this year. I'd say the leash. It was, and to be honest, it was going down to the last day, and it actually wasn't even in Leitrim's hands. Longford were in pole position. If they went down and beat Wexford, they were going to get promoted. So it was a tricky one for Leitrim. They had to yeah. suppose, make sure that they'd done their side of the thing, and um, they were playing against Tipperary and Leitrim to control the game. To be honest, from start to finish. I suppose last year losing to New York was devastating, like, you know, yeah. coming with speed of speed. So you would have to give a lot of credit to the way the Leitrim lads bounce back from that. You know, would it be easy to probably just say, oh, that's that's enough, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. But in fairness, they stuck at it. Um, they're getting reward now. They're three years in probably to a project where they've been doing the, the right things, the conditioning, the gym work. Uh, Ryan O'Rourke was a massive plus for them this year. Good footballer. Um, he's a very yeah. good footballer and really good attitude and looks after himself really well. He definitely was a fine for them this year because they didn't have him last year. He was injured. And I suppose Keith Byrne not being around as well. In one way, you would have thought Leitrim will never get promoted without Keith Byrne because he, he racks up 10, 11 points yeah. in the game. Yeah. But in another way, it nearly brought the likes of Ryan O'Rourke and Dara Rooney, who plays Club Cup up in Dublin. It, it put more emphasis on them boys to deliver. And I felt Leitrim as a forward line were nearly more potent as a result of probably not everything going through Keith Byrne this year. So... Um, really, really good performance from them at the weekend. And look, I don't think Leitrim have ever got a victory in Crow Park. So they are out the following week against Sligo. But I think they'll go full tilt to beat Leash this Saturday night. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And you have to. You have to. Like, Ledge Leash back in, in Division 4. Obviously, they're out of it now. And they're back in 3 again. Probably a, a county again that, that have probably underachieved over the last couple of years. I think since Sugru left, they've, they've sort of had a bit of a, a, bit of a, a trajectory going the ro- opposite way, haven't they? Yeah, and as we were kind of talking about, like the turnover of players, like they've had massive turnover of players, which which doesn't help, you know. Well, well, well that that's that's led something obviously before it goes out of my head. Like that that that's a common theme now. Uh, like we're looking at right. So I'm just thinking like the the Clare team that was named on Sunday, for example, they played down twelve lads missing from last year. You know, no Keelan Sex, and you know there was so much quality missing. Um, the the temporary team, unrecognizable, Ryan. You said. Uh, yeah. Billy, Billy Lee was telling me the Limerick team had 16 players from, from last year not available, you know. And and you're thinking to yourself, Ledge, it seems to be a common theme right throughout the country, you know. <laughs> like if you if you take 10 players out of the, the, the Dublin team that, that won the All Ireland last year, yeah, they're not staying yeah. division one, probably. They're they're yeah. probably not like they're <laughs> they're not winning, they're not winning All Ireland. Like so, I mean that, that would hit the best resource, the best condition teams, that would hit them hard. But when you're when you come down to levels again, like you're you're God, you're, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel and, and like back to Leeds, like their club football scene isn't hectic at the moment either. So like it, it's, yeah, it's, um, it's this is the, the Division 4 final is the massive one because as you said, like Leeds are out against Ligo, but look, it's largely irrelevant. It, it's kind of title for either of them, kind of the goal. I mean, the goal should be going fucking balls out to win a, to win them a Division 4 or Division 4 title. Like, and it's, like I know there's a bit of chat about scrapping the league finals and everything, and maybe for division one teams it's not to be all and end all, but for a division four team, like we know ourselves, geez, you'd take your left hand off for it. And even though you're promoted, it doesn't feel like that when you're playing in them. Like it feels like this is an actual final, you know. And I, I think um I, I think it'll be I think it'll be a good game. Like sometimes when teams play when, when teams are promoted and it's but still a final, but that little small bit of pressure is off, you know, and you can kind of a little bit more expression. And interesting about Keith Byrne, like we, we were we we're kind of talking about how sometimes over reliance on some players is not necessarily a good thing for overall fluidity. Like, you know, we're talking about the Cliffords and the Cons and these things. But um yeah, it's it's look, I, I'd say probably Andy's relieved because I'd say if this year they didn't go up, 
I'd say that could have been a stint done. Um, yeah. I saw somewhere on Twitter that someone who was at Longford turned him down and said he wasn't uh, wasn't mature and it wasn't a big enough name, was it, or something like that? And Longford did. Oh, I'm not sure. I was looking at it today, so maybe there's a bit of, bit of spice going on there in the on the on the border. But um, yeah, it, it's it's a great time to get to get out of Division Four. Like you'll never know elation like it. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. there's nothing like it. You know, there really isn't. Yeah, I think I think the biggest the biggest learning from just watching teams and how they're evolving is keeping the group together. Like I was at the Fermanagh Calvin game on Saturday night, and same thing, Calvin, like they have loads of players, but a lot of new names and they're neighbours of ours and we play them all the time. There's about six or seven players for Calvin that I had never, you know, had never come up against yeah. or recognised before. And they're probably a bit like that at the moment as well. You don't know what you're going to get from them. And um, so ideally if you can get into a setup or a county setup where you know you know you're going to get three years like Andy there on his third year has delivered the promotion players are willing to you can get a group that'll stick together I would have chatted to Mickey Graham obviously who's involved with Leitrim this year and he would have said when he came into Calvin his big focus was right lads there's no yo-yoing there's no I'm in for a year I'm out we're getting a group together here we're going to all get the you know involved in the strength and conditioning buy in and then in the three in his third year I think they delivered an Ulster title albeit it was COVID but still that was his focus, was just getting a group together that will stick at it for three years. And to be honest with you, even when Rory Geller took us, it was two years of complete buy-in. I think um, yeah. there, was, there was no player apart from maybe Shimi Quigley that dropped off. You know, So I think that's the secret. If you're getting players coming and going, realistically, you're probably not going to achieve that much. Yeah, and Lids, that was probably the same case for yourselves and Carl. There was, a, there was a good buy-in for a couple of seasons, like, you know, there's a, yeah, good, there's a good yeah. group of players stayed together, you know, and I think that, like, obviously for Division 4, you know, we're, we're always talking about 1 and Division 1 and Division 2 and, you know, Sam Maguire, but, like, for the likes of those later lads, as Ryan said, like, there'll be there'll be a great week, like, you know, a great buzz coming up the Croker. And I don't know Croker will be empty on Saturday night, but it's still, you're driving into Crow Park, it's a league final, it's a national final. It's massive, massive, you know. And, and like, I, I know we, we'd say over the years, like, 3 might not have been the strongest or 4 might not have been the strongest, but 4 teams like as, as we've been in division four that consistency if you get promoted out of four that consistency is so much harder to get when you're at that level like you know and, and yeah. uh, fairness to Leitrim after losing that Carlo game I thought it would have been very easy to crumble because you're thinking yeah. oh geez yeah. that's chance gone now you know so it takes a lot of resilience to, to kind of get back at it again and I, I think if you get out of if you get out of the, the quagmire that's four I think you really deserve it because yeah. it's it, it is tough, like it is really tough and, and you know we're talking about buying like it's very very easy to say to a division one footballer and eat three years of your life here, four years of your life, because they're probably going to they're, they're going to give it to you anyway without even having to be said. But it's it is a different dynamic for 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 let's say a Carlo or a Leach or whoever it might be. Like I remember in 2013, we Mead bet us, I think it was seven or 2014, seven fifteen to six points or something like that. I mean that nearly devastated a whole generation of our yeah. team. And and yeah. in terms of went the following year, and and kind of we had a group down from 2015 until 20 probably 18 when it broke up and. It took that full length of time from that group of lads. Like it wasn't successful straight away. It it took time, but it's it's really hard to sell that. It really yeah. is because it's the, the 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 incentive at the end of it. It's not. It mightn't be an All Ireland. It mightn't be a provincial. It could be promotion out of four, or maybe it's just being fucking competitive. Like you know, and and sometimes that's a hard sell. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Totally agree, lads. Well, lads, I'm gonna finish that just before we go. I'm gonna go Dublin, Armagh, down, and uh, Leitrim. I, I, my sort of my heart saying leave them rather than my head, but I won't. I don't want to see Leach win. Leach, who are you going for? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'd say. Oh, I'd say Dublin. I'd say Armagh. Um, yeah, I, I hate to follow you, but I'd say I'd say down and should we go Leach? We couldn't go Leach, could we? That's probably <laughs> Ryan. Straightforward oh, enough. Do you think so straightforward. Straight same thing, boys. All four. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll all get on together at least, anyway. <laughs> lads, thanks a million, and we'll chat next week. Thanks, boys. Cheers, lads. Thanks. thanks. See you later.